Did you know the medical world once seriously believed uranium could cure diabetes? It all started in 1853 when a French physiologist named Lacan was performing experiments on dogs. He wasn't looking for a cure for diabetes, he was studying toxicity. He gave small doses of uranium nitrate to dogs and when he tested their urine, it was full of sugar, the classic sign of diabetes. Back then, homeopathy had a huge influence on medicine and one of its core principles was like cures like. So, Lacan thought if uranium can cause diabetes, maybe uranium can cure diabetes. But the idea didn't gain much traction until 1895 when a physician named Dr. Samuel West took the stage at the annual meeting of the British Medical Association and presented his findings. He had treated eight diabetic patients with uranium salts. At first, he gave one to two grains of uranium salts dissolved in water, eventually going up to 20 grains three times a day. He observed that the sugar in the urine was disappearing, along with improvement in other symptoms. At that time, they didn't have blood tests, doctors only tested urine. If the urine was clear of sugar, the patient was considered cured. The doctors in the room were stunned. Once these findings became public, the uranium fever hit the market. Pharmaceutical companies began producing numerous uranium-based products, but the most famous one was Husky's Uranium Wine, high-end Bordeaux laced with uranium nitrate. Patients were instructed to drink one small glass with every meal. For nearly two decades, diabetic patients across Europe and America sat down to dinner and drank radioactive heavy metal wine, and they did feel better, but only because a placebo and the sedation from the wine. Meanwhile, their bodies were slowly dying of uremic poisoning. The damage from uranium wasn't obvious at first because it initially targeted the proximal convoluted tubules of the nephrons, the functional units of the kidney. But as the patients continued taking it, the damage worsened until entire nephrons failed. This caused low urine formation, which meant less or no sugar appeared in the urine. Doctors mistook this for improvement, believing that diabetes had been cured, when in reality, the kidneys were simply shutting down. This frenzy finally came to an end after a safer and effective alternative was discovered. In 1921, researchers Frederick Benting and Charles Best managed to isolate a secretion from the pancreas of a dog. They called it isolatin, later renamed insulin. It was the first compound that could genuinely manage diabetes without serious side effects. Other reasons for the decline of uranium treatments included the rising number of reports of kidney failure, acute liver failure, and other health problems. Doctors could no longer deny that uranium was harming people. In 1928, the British government banned the use of uranium as a health tonic and officially classified it as a poison. Gradually, all uranium-based products were removed from the market, with Paskey's uranium wine being the last to go, ending this grim chapter in the history of medicine. If you look at this whole thing, from the perspective of those doctors, the uranium technically did solve the patient's health problems eventually. After all, you can't have diabetes if you are dead, a permanent solution, not just the one they were hoping for.